changes, you're going to transform us from the inside out through the power of your word. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says, Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen. I heard about a little girl that was dressed in her Sunday best, was late and she was running to her Sunday school class. As she was running, she was praying, dear God, please don't let me be late, don't let me be late. Then she fell. She got up, dusted herself off and saw that her dress was now dirty and had a little tear. She started running even with pain and still praying, dear God, please don't let me be late, don't let me be late. But this time she added, but please don't push me either. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> she felt God was pushing her, okay? Sometimes I feel that I almost have to push you. And this teaching today, it has a purpose. It has the purpose of me trying to push this church to the direction that we have to have. So I want everybody to bear with me, pay attention, and learn for the next few minutes what I want to talk to you. I want that you try today to see a video that is going to help us to understand. And as they get in ready with the video, I'm going to read a portion from the Word of God that it says this. This is from the book of Acts 1 through 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. You hear this? Unto Jesus was taken up to heaven through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his sufferings, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. And in other words, that he resurrected. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion while he was in with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you heard me speaking about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times. Please listen. O days that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power. What it says there? You don't know the times. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness. You will be my what? Witness. In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Mm. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hit him from their side. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has the same one. You will come back. Can you please go on? I don't know where he is. Maybe he's helping. I don't know. Thank you. The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you see him go into Again, him going to heaven. What an amazing, amazing, amazing video. For me, I cannot find a video closer than that. 
that describe how powerful would it be that day for the people. Can you imagine how powerful it was for the disciples to see their Lord literally disappear in front of their eyes? But you know what? As he was living, he gave us indications, not only for them, but for all of us. I want to talk to you about what he said. Because we're going back today to our series and our teachings that we've been having about he came, he died, he resurrected, he walked among us, and then he went to heaven. But before he ascend to heaven, there was an important, very important teaching for all of us. And it's something that I want to communicate today. Before Jesus left, he talked to us about at least three very important things. Three things that I think church has missed. Somehow church has become busy with programs. Somehow church has become busy with so many activities. And it's so good. They exist to bless the people in church. And I know this church has a tremendous arm of God or ministry that is always reaching the last. When somebody is about to die, don't you think the last words are very important? I'm asking you. Yes, if somebody is dying, the last words that he wants to communicate, I promise to you that those are the most important words. It's almost like I'm trying to say everything in conclusion is this. Everything for what I came. The reason I left my father. The reason I went to the cross and suffered what I suffered. Here is, and he gave the disciples before he ascended. And we're going to be talking the next weeks about all that. And where is God now? And, and all that that we need to know about his coming. How many want to learn about his coming? And, and we're going to be learning a lot about that. But today, see, we are more curious about when he's coming back than fulfill. Our obligations of servants of God. You know what I'm talking about? It's even more excited when he's coming back and, and, and talk to me where is he right now. It's so good. But let's talk about what he said that we're supposed to be doing right now. Have you ever asked why Jesus left? I ask myself a lot of questions all the time. And I asked this question, why did he have to leave? Why he couldn't stay and live forever among us? Why? There was a plan. And I'm going to throw you some light into this. Also about the words that he said. The first thing he said, and, and, and we just read over there. You know that the promise was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My friends, this is something that we as Christians, we have to have the desire off. So many people love God and they want the blessings from God, but they don't seek the power of the Holy Spirit because that requires consecration. So we want the blessings from God. We want the love from God, but we don't want to walk in the power because it requires, it's free, but it requires what? Some dedication from us to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now here's what I want to say. How many of you want to stand in Christ the rest of your life? <coughs> Three people. How many of you want to stand in Christ? In other words, you want to be firm in Christ even in the difficult times as the times approach. The Bible says that without the power of the Holy Spirit, listen to me young people, without the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to make it. That's what we have to search to be fulfilled in his presence. That's why we come to church. That's why we read the word of God. That's why we hear teachings like this one. We cry out in prayer, God, 
Fill me up with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because some of us, we realize that without that power, you can have all the knowledge. You can have all the good intentions. But without the power of the Holy Spirit, sooner or later, we're going to fall. How many know what I'm talking about? We stand in by the grace of God. But the test is too great. And we have to walk in the Spirit. And that is only going to happen by you and me crying out to be fulfilled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you getting it? You need to receive the fulfillment. And look at me. We have heard that so many times that it's almost like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. How many of you made mistakes this week? You know why you made the mistakes? I'm going to tell you right now. Because you get colder. You're not in the presence of God enough. And you're allowing your flesh to control you. Are you with me? When you are in the presence of God, you think according to the Spirit. Are you with me? If somebody even reprehends you, you're in the Spirit, you say, thank you for taking the time to tell me that. Because you walk in what? In the Spirit. But when somebody reprehends you and you're in the flesh, what happened with the flesh? Am I right? You don't have to go to university to know where you're walking. You're walking in the flesh, you're walking in the spirit. And if you're not overcoming here, trust me, you will not overcome out there. So understand what I'm doing. Okay? Understand. Well, you have to be a witness for Christ. It took me about five minutes. We will talk about it. You have to be a witness for Christ. He says, take the power so you can become a witness. We need to talk about this. Jesus was saying, I want that you be my witness. What is that? Well, in other words, I'm going to read to you the simple meaning of being a witness. is to testify, giving evidence. Is someone present at a transaction to testify to it having taken place having personal knowledge of something or someone it's a public affirmation nowadays when somebody say oh I'm out I'm out I'm out I'm out I'm out yes or no well, it's gonna take one day on my job it's gonna be a difficult no no I don't want to be and even when the city call us for those that we you know we are from this country, we born in this country, we are citizens of this country, you have to go once in a while, the city calls you to be what? To practice and be part of a what? A jury. And they give you the evidence of the case. Am I right? That everybody likes to go to those things? Nobody. You like to go to those things? You like to miss your job and then. But we don't like to go. Here's one situation one day. I'm driving, the street is flashing, flashing in Bushwick. And then suddenly, I see a guy in a motorcycle, zoom, going very fast. In a moment of an instant, another guy was not paying attention, made the turn, and right in front of my eyes, a huge accident happened. By the grace of God, the grace of God, the guy walked and lived. The motorcycle was destroyed. Even his helmet was destroyed. I was amazed that he walked out of the accident. Are you with me? I witnessed, I witnessed in front of my eyes what happened right away. I saw it with my own eyes. I walk out of the car. I try to get involved to help the gentleman. The guy, listen, the guy of the, the truck, the van, as I was helping the man of the motorcycle, guess what he did? He ran away. From far away, I started taking pictures of what? The license. He left, poor guy on the motorcycle. We give him my phone number. We tried to help him. We tried to get involved. And I said, we can help you, blah, blah. The ambulance came, etc., etc. 
Anybody could have told me anything. They could have told me later in the news that it was the foul of one person that was crossing. Or they could have told me that whatever. I was there. I witnessed. Listen to me. I witnessed what was going on. Listen to me. These disciples that walked with Jesus, they saw everything. And Jesus said, now you have to become a witness. I'm about to finish today. My teaching is very short. You have to get this. Why Jesus said that we have to be a witness? Because there is going to be so many confusion out there. And you say, well, I was not there. I was not there to tell none of us. So how can I be a witness of what Jesus came to do and now where he is? How? How many of you can say today, I know that I know that the living God lives in my heart. I'm asking you. Yes or no? Can they convince you different? Josh, can you run to the stage? I'm sorry, but you're one of the mature ones. Run to the stage. Give a hand clap to Josh. He's one of the young pastors to this place. Josh, I'm not going to give you a microphone. But can I convince you that Christ is not a lie? No way. But you know what? I can come and try, you know, to seduce you with... He lives in me. You see? You see? But, but in other words... I can say whatever I want, but what is going on in the inside of him, nobody can take it away. Say something about it. No way. When he lives and he's alive and he's real in you, there's no way that anybody, no matter what they say, no matter what they try to do, what they offer you, it's real to you. And nobody can take that away. Come on, give a hand clap to God. Give a hand clap to Josh. Nobody can take it away. So I have a question for you. Can Josh testify that the living God is really his heart? Yes, yes or no? Yes. See, don't get confused. You don't have to testify. Oh, I see him going up. Oh, I see him. One time I was sleeping and then I saw him. That's not what you need to testify. Because people are going to say, you ate too much pizza that night. What, what the Bible says that we have to testify, that we have to become a witness through the power of the Holy Spirit. That man is in the power of the Holy Spirit. How many know that Josh is walking in the power of the Holy Spirit? So he's going to testify no matter what. Can you convince Pastor Tony that God is not real? No. Can you convince me? No. Try if you can. No, you can. You know why? Because he not only lives in me, but I have witnessed his power in life. I have seen him healing the sick. Oh, anybody's getting how? What I'm trying to communicate? Can you convince me he's not real? You're going to waste your day. Because I know he's real in me. I have seen him do miracles in front of me. And not only that, not only that. I have seen the power of the sacrifice of Christ changing the most sinner man that would think has no forgiveness and be on their knees saying, God, thank you. I was not there when he died. I could not imagine. Only the word of God describes it to me. But you know what? Look at me. But I was present when my son was dying. And because of the power of the blood of Jesus, I saw him literally come from dead to life. You better give a hand clap to God, my friends. Nobody, nobody can tell me he's not real. He's going to be my witness. You're going to have to communicate. You're going to have to tell the people. But he says, you have to go. He says, what? You have to what? When Jesus was ascending, look at me. He was ascending. How many think that was majestic? He was ascending. And then he said, Peter. And then Peter says, what, Lord? I can see your house from here, Peter. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. When, when he was ascending, he said, Peter, go. John, go. Go. Go and tell them. Because if we don't go, how many of you believe the disciples 
I'm finishing with this. How many of you believe that the disciples did their part? Somebody's clapping to the disciples. They did their part. That they did their part. Yes or no? They did. How do we know? Because Delia is alive through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because you are a Christian today. Because you can be a youth pastor today. Because if Jesus has not come yet, is this message going to be dead? Who's going to stay alive? I'm asking you. 20 years from today, today life is going crazy. What is wrong now appears that is right in society. So is the message of Christ going to be dead 20 years from today? Yes or no? Yes or no? What's going to make the difference? What's going to make the difference? The difference was in the last words of Jesus. He said by the power of my Holy Spirit, you need to be a witness. Keep telling the people. Keep telling the people. Keep telling the people about your experience. Nobody can take away your experience. They can take away your knowledge. They can take away your health. They can take anything. But nobody can take away what Jesus did for my heart. One day when I was lost. Can be taken away. Can be done. I would die with that in my heart. Can be done. I wonder you finish today. Oh, there you are. He like the Holy Spirit. He was fixing everything today. You know, thank you so much. It was crazy today. Thank you. Oh. I finish with this. Can I finish now? What do you mean now? No, yeah. Shh, shh, shh. If we don't do our part, the enemy is not playing. He's twisting the word. Are you with me? He's twisting the word in a way the people is getting. Christianity are not and they become a strong everywhere are you with me by the way I need to make a statement if you hear somebody that look like us and they say you pare de sufrir okay our Brazilian brothers how many know what I'm talking about have you ever seen them anyway just to let you know it's not from God. It's a cult. Amen? Not everything that looks like us is us. Amen? That's why you have to get into the Word of God. Amen? You have to get into the Word of God so you can receive the power constantly of the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit. Be open. Be ready. In the next few weeks, we're going to be giving you and providing you time to receive this blessing. Amen? You have to desire. But you also have to do a serious decision by the power of the Holy Spirit to change from the inside out. Amen? Because he will follow you. He's going to follow you the power wherever you go. Are you ready to get out and witness about Jesus? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Tell them. Did anybody here has a story about how Jesus helped you? How Jesus is real? Anybody? Anybody? Let me, let me put it another way. That anybody here can tell Jesus is real because he has to do something in your life. Yes? Are you sure? Are you going to tell the people? You're not going to tell the people? And then it's going to die. You're going to tell the people? You got to tell the people. So you see, she loves God, but she don't want to tell. She needs the fulfillment of what? Of the Holy Spirit. That will remove any intimidation. If you remember when Paul was fulfilled. I'm sorry, with Peter. He was intimidated in one room. Saying, I cannot get out. But then... He received the power of the Holy Spirit. 
and he walked out of that. They were saying, they're drunk. And he come out and say, hey! So you can wake up the people in the back. He says, hey! We're not drunk. This is a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the way, here's the power that was sent and promised by Jesus. The one you kill and crucify. Okay, now we're talking about a man that has tremendous character and power. What happened a few minutes ago, he was hiding in the room. Now he's out. What's the difference? You know what's the difference? The power of the Holy Spirit. You want to lose intimidation? Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And you will do great things in this place. I encourage you to understand what I said today. If we don't testify, it's uncomfortable. I know. If we don't testify, the whole message is going to die. I said, as long as I live, I'm not going to let die this message. Anybody want to join me? Anybody wants to join me? I'm asking you. Anybody out there? Yes? Stand up on your feet. Oh, Jesus. We have so many interruptions and difficult things going on today. But I know why. The enemy didn't want that we communicate the truth. Because the truth is powerful. Amen. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we live this place, God, we want the power of the Holy Spirit to become real in our hearts. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you release, Father, over our lives, anointing. Father, use us to become witnesses. To witness, God, what you have done in our hearts. God, nobody can take that away, that experience. So, Father, I pray. Father, I pray that you make it more real and real every day in our lives. We love you, Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, Jesus, we love you. We love you.